Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. And today, a very special review indeed, because finally I'm getting my hands on the Breitling Navi timer. But this is no ordinary Navi timer. This is actually the Rattrapant or Rattrapante, if you want to say it with some Italian flair. And it was, in fact, actually one of my favorite releases of Basel World 2017. And there were quite a few. As you guys know, I'm a big navi timer fan uh, so the navi timer was probably my favorite chronograph before i get into this particular view i've got to do wristwatch check and yes the old lion shark is back um, and it is quite interestingly on swiss time i've put it on mesh uh, which i think works wonderfully with the um well any particular uh, 1521 so it is the squalid lion shark Every time I look at it, it just makes my day. That that grey, that ah, oh, the red, the orange hand. It's ah, oh, wouldn't change a thing. I'm still absolutely over the moon with it. Anyway, uh, let's get on with the review. Now, I should give a massive thank you to Saltzmans who have graciously lent this in. If you're not familiar with Saltzmans, they're based in Rhode Island. Uh, they are actually my watch repairers of choice. In fact, as we speak, they're repairing a watch for me. They are also authorized Breitling uh, dealers. Big shout out to them and thank you so much for lending this in. Uh, I'm not going to discuss the history of Breitling uh, because I think we, we have covered it various times before. I have a look back in my previous reviews of uh, the the Colt, for example, and the Navi Timer, a huge, iconic Swiss brand founded, uh, when was it? I think it was um, 1884, of course. Now, we have to discuss a little bit of history about the Navi Timer itself because it has a wonderful legacy, a very rich, deep history. The Navi Timer was introduced uh, in 1952, created as a wrist instrument designed for aviation. Uh, at the time of its design, it was um, pretty much the ultimate tool watch, and it was a tool that every pilot uh, would need while flying it integrated that hugely emblematic slide rule uh, bezel for taking in-flight measurements. In its first year of production, it was powered by the Valjeu 72 movement, but later uh, moved to the Venus 178. Uh, then they moved to the famous uh, automatic caliber 11. The watch saw many iterations throughout the years, inclu including actually a, a digital quartz versions, uh, which I think are pretty cool. And then in 2012, they celebrated their 60th anniversary with a limited edition. I think it was with a blue dial and of course, an in-house movement. So the Rattrapant is the latest edition and was released at Baselworld, like I mentioned. It features the original Navi timer dial, but this time, of course, with the split second chronograph function. And it's the first time that this manufacturer has made this complication entirely in-house. So it's something very, very unique and quite remarkable. If you do recall, the duograph from Breitling had a split seconds, and that was, I think, in the 1940s, and that has become extremely collectible. Uh, so it's nice to see Breitling returning and referring, especially to its heritage, uh, with this complication in particular. They did return to make the, a small number of split second navy timers, I believe, in the 1990s, and it was combined with a perpetual calendar. Uh, and I, I think that time it was powered by a very compact, Frederick uh, Piguet caliber 1187 movement. Uh, those were the only split second Navi timers ever made um, until, of course, 2017. Now, this uh, Rattrapante is available both in steel and 18 karat. Uh, red gold, the latter being, I think, limited to 250 pieces. Both versions are fitted with what they call the Pan American Bronze Dial, which is something uh, quite special and certainly has its own character, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in just a moment. So the version we have today is, of course, the stainless steel version. Now, just look at that. My God, my God indeed. And I never thought a brown dial would be so appealing. So let's go over the basic specifications. Now this of course is the reference AB031021. It comes on this beautiful brightening leather strap with a flip clasp system here. Very simple, but beautifully done. 
There is a version on a stainless steel bracelet. I believe it costs a little bit more. So let's get the dimensions out of the way first. So the diameter is 45 millimeters. We've got a height or thickness of 15, quite tall. Lug to lug, we're looking at 52 millimeters. And then the lug width of a massive 24. So it really is a beast of a watch. Um, far too big for me. And in fact, actually, let me just pull in my Navi timer. You guys know I'm a, I'm a big Navi timer guy. That's my 41 millimeter. And as you can see, it's not that dramatically big. I was quite shocked at how small the 45 millimeter watch uh, looks, but unfortunately its height is pretty tall. Uh, but we'll get to um, the wrist shot uh, a little bit later on. So the case is exactly the same as any Navi timer, completely stainless steel in this, in this version. Uh, all high polished finish, uh, which Breitling do incredibly well. The only sections that have any variety in the finishing are the fluted edge of the bezel. It kind of reminds me of the base of a Doric column and you can see in there that it is actually brushed or bead blasted. Very, very subtle, uh, hardly noticeable, but I do find it very endearing. We do have this beautiful domed or cambered, I should say, uh, sapphire glass which has anti-reflective coating on both sides and it's something that Breitling do ever so well just just look at that it looks like the curvature of the earth from space it has a wonderful distortion to it but only at, a, at an angle like that we have the bi-directional uh, slide rule bezel there that is just so typical of the Navi timer again in the contrasting white to differentiate it from the main dial v-shaped layout for the subdials and a little date uh, tucked away at the 430 position we have the main seconds at the nine o'clock a 12 hour uh, counter at the six and then a 30 minute counter at the three o'clock beautiful applied markers the wonderful winged logo of the Breitling brand at the 12 o'clock. We have the same fonts and lettering and style uh, as we've seen before with, if I show you there, sorry about the smudges of my Navi timer. So not much has changed. Although we do have this rich brown and it's a very particular brown. It resembles a quite a deep sepia. At times it's a uh, umber, almost gray, and other times it's like a dark rosewood. And I love how the light hits it and especially kind of exaggerated with the sapphire glass. The dial is something, looking at it at an angle, is, is one of Breitling's strong points. Uh, the dial on Navitimer is one of my favorite dials of all time. They really know what they're doing. It is made to utter perfection. The spacing, the balance, the symmetry of the dial, the way things are positioned in relation to everything else. And I'm so glad they didn't change that. I think it would remove the magic, the allure and the romance that has captivated me from the moment I first fell in love with the Navi timer. You really get to read the exact time with precision. And that is what has been so fundamentally important and the key feature of the Navi timer. We have those beautifully sunken subdials giving it a little bit of uh, depth. It's like a cavernous valley, it's wonderful. So we have the pushers at the standard position, but the Rattrapant extra pusher incorporated into the crown. The crown is a non-screw down crown. It's 30 meters uh, water resistant. And we do, obviously we have manual wind as well. And I must say, winding this particular movement, uh, it does feel quite different because of course this is a newer, in-house movement. So let's uh, engage that Rattrapant chronograph. Stop start at the top and then reset at the bottom. And off it goes. Now, you'll notice it looks like a standard uh, chronograph Navi timer, but it's very carefully and, and quite ingeniously incorporated into that second hand. You push that button, and you just have to hold it down once or push it once, and that second hand separates. And look how the counterbalance, if you remember on the, on the balance of standard Navi timer, you have the B and the 
anchor. This time they're separated. A very subtle touch, but gorgeous. And then to catch it up, you press it again. And honestly, it was like, you hardly even see it. So I'll just do it again so you can see. Splitting the second hand, putting it back together, splitting it, and then putting it back together. Maybe I should include a slow-mo action replay. <laughs> uh, and then to catch up, boom. Ah. Oh. Gorgeous. I mean, really impressive action to it. And what is the point of a split second? Well, you can get split second recordings. It's just a, a very practical and a wonderful addition to the standard Navitimer chronograph. And in fact, that's what I said in my comments during the Basel World releases. I, I said it, I thought it was just a, a, an excellent logical progression and the perfect complication for the Navi timer. The real magic, the real special goings on of, of this watch lies in the movement. So let's discuss the movement a little bit. Essentially, we have the B03. This is an automatic operating at 28,800 vibrations an hour. It is, like all Breitling uh, automatic movements, chronometer certified, and we do have quick set on the date. But what is interesting about this particular movement is the B03 operates like a conventional split seconds. It has been constructed in a very ingenious manner to improve reliability and ease of service. The entire split seconds mechanism comprises of just 28 parts, reducing the grandness of what is, let's be honest, traditionally a grand complication, but making it significantly more affordable. So the split seconds mechanism is modular. Even though the chronograph base movement is integrated, uh, it sits in between the dial and the main plate of the base movement. Consequently, when seen from the back, the rose gold version, I must point out, has a display back. This one, unfortunately, doesn't. But you can see in that version, the, the B03 looks almost identical to the B01, which, of course, is uh, what it's based on. It's a solid, solid movement. Uh, so much so that uh, Breitling actually supply Tudor uh, with the O1. Performance is, as you'd expect, uh, of the highest standard. Not only chronometer certified, but they even have their own facilities at Le Champ de Fonds. An entire department just dedicated to uh, making sure that every piece is accurate. So it really does the job it was intended to do. What is also quite novel about this particular movement is the clamp for the split seconds wheel. In a conventional split seconds movement, the wheel is stopped by brakes that resemble a pair of tongs. This is a complex and occasionally unreliable system. What Breitling have done here is they've replaced it with the rubber o-ring that's pressed against the wheel by a clamp uh, when the split seconds is stopped and this has been patented by Breitling the o-ring mechanism results in a far more precise halting of the split seconds so absolutely ingenious and very very impressive and I'm, I'm just you know over the moon that Breitling are really returning to uh, this kind of level of in-house craftsmanship. The second patented feature inside the B03 is the isolator mechanism, which uses a simpler stamped uh, lever to replace the traditional pin. While different, the isolator mechanism performs the same function as it has in split seconds, preventing the drag resulting in a deterioration of timekeeping. So this isolator in the split second and the vertical clutch in the chronograph mechanism uh, preserves much of its 70 hour, very impressive 70 hour power reserve, even while the chronograph is running. This all translates to a, a simplified mechanism, but also more affordable price. The steel one priced at 11,000 and upwards, uh, which is pretty good. And let's not neglect to mention that's about 10% less than what IWC asked for in their uh, Portuguese Fratrapant, which has a cleverly modified Valjoux 7750. So, 10% less than that. You're getting bang for buck here. So on the back, we have your standard uh, Navi timer screwing case back with those beautiful uh, conversion scales. And of course, the little uh, bead blasted 
center section. We do have luminescence. It's the, basically exactly the same as my Navi timer. Little pips on the tip of the markers and then a double application of lume at the 12 o'clock so you get your orientation. While very small, it is super luminova, so it does respond nicely and you do get it on the hands as well. The hands for the hour and minutes are um, exactly the same again, just standard baton style with pointed tip. The printing, the level of attention to detail is astounding. It's extremely legible, uh, despite the complexity. Uh, it is an acquired taste, not everybody likes uh, busy aviation star watch. I love it. Am I ever going to use any of these complications? <laughs> Probably not. Uh, although I must admit, playing with the, uh, the, the Rattrapant is really, really cool. And it's nice that you don't have to hold down. You can just push it, read the uh, measurement, and then push it again. Boom. So let's pop it on the wrist and see how this giant bad boy wears. Okay, and there we go. Yes, it certainly is big. It overhangs my tiny little wrist, but you gotta you gotta bear in mind this is 45 millimeters. It still fits on the wrist. Just um, it is too big for me. I my wrist is about six and a quarter inches, so yeah, very minute. I, I would only recommend this if you have a wrist of, I would say, you know, six and a half, seven inches and above then you should be absolutely fine. Uh, the weight is about 109 grams on the strap. It is also very tall compared to my normal Navi Timer because obviously it has to house that wonderful new movement. Having said that, the size makes it much more legible, um, especially because everything is, is of a larger scale, obviously. The quality, the presence is there. It's it's funny, It's it's kind of blingy but without being ostentatiously vulgar <laughs> you know it, it has incredible uh, presence and i love that pop of red on the uh, the seconds hand for the chronograph it's red all the way to the center the leather is extremely substantial i i love the buckle it does taper nicely very very nicely done the stitching everything and the stitching of course to uh, correspond with the color scheme on the dial the brown is is definitely not a color I would have ever imagined, but they chose it so well. It has a, a lovely luster uh, to it, and yeah, it's it's you know, guys, let's be honest. Brown is not your first immediate choice, but I got to say, it's gorgeous. It really is. Let's take it off the wrist and summarize the watch. Positives and negatives. Well, the positives, first of all. I think it's a welcome return to higher end watchmaking for Breitling. I love the movement. I, I, I love the integration of the complication, the layout, the colors, the quality. It's it's all there. And I actually got to say this and I might catch some flack. I think it's pretty good value for money compared to what other brands offer. Uh, Rattrapant is difficult to do. Uh, well, a chronograph is difficult to do, but a column wheel in-house and the Rattrapant uh, complication with a date, very, very impressive indeed. I think with this added complication, it's brought the Navi Timer bang up to date. It's an undisputed classic. Aesthetically, may not have changed much from its um, ancestors, but with this impressive uh, movement powering it, it's brought it back up to date. The Navi Timer range really needed that. Now, this is only a guess, but perhaps the brown was inspired by the recent trend for or desire for patina dials. Um, it does kind of make me think of that. Uh, it's this beautiful, very, very appealing radial brushed uh, finish with the sunburst effect. And it certainly has a, a an imposing wrist presence and that kind of goes into my negatives. I would have loved to see this in the smaller size like my Navi Timer here. Had they made it 41 I would have sold this and bought it in a heartbeat. I also think it's a little bit of a shame they didn't put the see-through case back, um, the display case back on the steel version as well. Big, big shame. I think you, you want to see that column wheel. You want to see that movement. The, the movement is decently decorated. They haven't gone over the top. Um, and we should mention that. But again, this goes back to its tool 
instrument roots. This is not a dress watch. This is a this is a serious professional tool. Um, I also think the height is a bit of an issue to house this new movement and you've got the, the extra module. Perhaps if they had made a, a manual wind version that could have reduced some of the height taking away the rotor. I, I would I, I would love to see that. And I guess in a way I'm maybe relieved that they didn't do a smaller version because uh, otherwise I'd, I'd have to buy one. Um, but yeah, a gorgeous, gorgeous watch. If you have the wrists for it, if uh, you want to spend 11 grand on, I think, the best value Rattrapant on the market currently, a prestigious uh, line of watches, um, a true, true icon of horology, then I think, actually, I've got to, I'm, I'm going to say, this is the best Rattrapant on the market, you know, I, if you got the wrist for it, go for it, it's gorgeous, it is mesmerizing, it's captivating, the feeling of luxury is there, the feeling of quality, it's exquisite, I just wish it was a little bit smaller, but then again, I always say that. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. What an absolute beauty. Massive thank you to Saltzmans again for sending it in. Don't forget to add your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.